For the beam shown below with constant EI by area moment method, determine the slopes just to the left and just to the right and deflection at C. So here is the given figure. So before I solve this, I ask favor to those who are my subscribers to please share my videos so that I will be inspired to do more lecture videos and sample problem videos in structural theory and, and, and in other subjects. My plan is to upload so many examples and lecture videos so that it will be a one-stop channel for everybody. I'm not selfish in in sharing my my skills in civil engineering subjects so please do so by sharing my videos to others to your friends to your friends friends help me uh, publish my work by sharing my work so that others can also benefit from it and that's the only way I will be inspired to do more lecture videos. This is very tiring because of the drawing and I strive hard just to make the solution very detailed and very self-explanatory and more visual so that everybody can understand even if the problem is a little bit, the problems are from simple to challenging ones. So please do so because, you know, I also feel tiredness of my body. And that's the only way when you share to somebody and many can, many will subscribe. There will come a time that I will conduct lecture that is um, live so that everybody can listen to my can watch my live videos also but as of now i still have very few subscribers so meaning to say i should have uh, wait until there will be enough subscribers so that whenever i plan to conduct live lectures then at least 100 people can watch my live videos for lecture and for sample problems purposes and for live reactions so let me start by computing the reactions at a and d first so let's have summation moment considering cd is summation moment at c equals zero so r sub d times 4 minus 20 times 6 equal 0 so r sub d is equal to 30 kilonewtons so if r d is 30 kilonewtons upward then the reaction just to the right of c would be 10 downward then summation moment b so that we can solve for a y considering a b c so take note that there is 10 downward here, so there is also 10 upward just to the left of C. So we have AY times 6, then minus 30 times 10 times 1, half of 10 is 5, so meaning to say this is 1, 5 minus 4. Then plus there is 10 upward just to the left, plus 10 times, minus, sorry, my there is 10 upward which is uh, counterclockwise so minus 10 times 4 so ay is equal to 7 170 over 3 kilonewtons so these are the reactions because we i plan to make b and d as the moment centers for this case you can have c as the only moment center but if you if we choose any other point not not this hinge here then there should be two uh, moment centers for that case because we have to this we have to transmit the moment by these internal forces at C 
if you choose C as the only moment center, then develop the habit of of cutting this loading here so that the area would be easy to compute and the location of the centroid will be known. If you choose C as the only moment center and you extend the area, it would be difficult and there will be many areas involved. So I select B and D as the moment center. So let's prepare the moment diagram by parts. First, 170 over 3 times 6 triangle. That would be 340 over EI. Then moment due to this loading, 30 times 6 times 3. It's second degree. And it is equal to 540 over EI, second degree. Then 10 kilonewtons moment uh, about B is 10 times 4, so 40 over EI. Then moment due to this uniform loading about B is 30 times 4 times 2, 240 second degree. Then we proceed to D. We have 10 downward here, triangle. 10 times 4, so 40 over EI. Then 20 times 2 is also 40 over EI. So this is the moment diagram by parts by selecting points B and D as moment centers. So we need to know the slope at B so that after knowing the slope at B, we transmit it to C. Because remember, this is a hinge. There is slope just to the left of C and we do not know yet the position of C, whether it is above or below the uh, beam's original axis. So to compute slope at B, we must know the deviation of A relative to the tangent at B. So EI deviation of A relative to the tangent at B, moment of areas between A and B with respect to A. So 0.5 of 6 times 340, the moment arm or distance of the centroid from A is 2 thirds of 6. So 4. This area is 1 third of 6 times 540. This distance is 6 over 4 or 1.5. Remember, 6 over n plus 2. L over n plus 2, so 6 over 4. 1.5, so its distance from A is 4.5. 6 minus 1.5. So minus 1 third of 6 times 540 times 4.5. So therefore, deviation of A relative to the tangent at B is equal to negative 780 over EI. Negative means A is below the reference tangent at B. So B is above A as shown. Then this is deviation of A relative to the tangent at B. So A is below that reference tangent because this is negative. So therefore, theta B is negative also. So theta B, that's theta B, that's also theta B. So theta B is negative because it is sloping down to the right. Negative of division of A relative to B divided by 6. So it is negative of 780 over 6 EI. So theta B is negative 130 over EI. Then we compute EI theta B to C left. So AI theta B to C left is the area between B and C left. So it is quantity 1 half or 0.5 of 4 times 40 then minus one third of four times 240. Just the area between B and C left, just to the left of C. So it is equal to negative 240 over EI. So negative means the tangent at B to the tangent at C left is clockwise. For it to be clockwise, C should be below the tangent at B. And we will verify that by computing EI division of C left relative to the tangent at B. So EI theta C left 
relative to the tangent at B is moment of areas between B and C left with respect to C left. So we copy this area here and the moment arm or distance of centroid of that area from C left is two thirds of four. That's why we have eight thirds. Then min minus this area here, since this distance is four over n plus two, 4 over 4 plus 2 is 4 over 4, 1. So the distance of the centroid from C left is 3, 4 minus 1. So minus 1 third of 4 times 240 times 3. So division of C left relative to the tangent at B is equal to negative 2 to 40 over 3i. So that's negative. So that means that the Hinge after deflection will be below that reference tangent at C. So let's now draw the portion B, C, D. Take note B and D are supports, so the elastic curve will, will cross those points because these are supports. So let's draw the tangent at B first. So this is theta B. And the tangent at C left. So this is 4 times theta B because this is 4 meters. Then this is the tangent at C. So that from tangent at B to tangent at C left, theta B C left, it's negative 40. So meaning to say clockwise. From B, tangent to B to tangent C, clockwise. And it is theta B C left. Then the tangent at C left and the horizontal, which is this angle here, which is also equal to this angle here, is theta C left. That's theta C left. And from the figure, it is simply negative because it is sloping down to the right. It is negative of absolute value of theta B plus absolute value of theta B C left. So we can now compute theta C left. It is negative of absolute value of theta B, negative 130, absolute value of negative 130 over EI, plus absolute value of theta B C left, which is negative 240 over EI. So theta C left is equal to negative 370 over EI, just like in double integration method in example 100K. Next is this deflection at C. So this is division of C left relative to the tangent at B. Since it is negative, division of C left relative to the tangent at B negative. So meaning to say point C left is below the reference tangent at B as shown in this figure. So that's division of C left relative to the tangent at B. Therefore, delta, delta C, the whole of this is delta C, is negative because it is below the original horizontal axis of the beam. It is negative of quantity absolute value of 4 theta B plus absolute value of theta C left B. Everything is given. So delta C is equal to negative of absolute value of 4 times theta B, 4 times negative 130 over EI plus absolute value of negative 2 to 40 over 3 EI. So it is negative 3,800 over 3, the exact value. In decimal, it is negative 1266.667 over EI, just like in double integration. And finally, theta C right, since we already know this, we need to compute deviation of D relative to the tangent at C right. If, so that we know if the tangent at C right is above D or below D. Below D. So let's evaluate EI deviation of D relative to the tangent at C right, just to the right of C. And it is the moment of area between C and D with respect to D. So it is this area on here, which is negative. So negative of 0 0.5 or 1 half of 4 times 40. Then moment arm is 1 third of 4, so 4 thirds. So it is equal to division of D relative to the tangent at C right is equal to negative 320 over 3EI.
because it is negative, it means that D is below the reference tangent at C. So drawing the tangent at C, right? This is division of D relative to the tangent at C, right? Because D is below that reference tangent. So division of D relative to the tangent at C, right? So the angle that the tangent at C, right, makes with the horizontal is theta C, right? As shown. And this is delta C, remember? The whole of that, delta C. And this is theta C, right? Theta C right is positive because it is inclined up to the right. And it is simply equal to tangent theta C right is theta C right itself. It is absolute value of theta D relative to C right plus delta C over 4. Then everything is known. So theta C right is equal to positive or absolute value of theta D C right, so absolute value of negative 20 over 3EI plus delta C, the exact value of delta C is negative 3,800 over 3EI, then divided by 4, that horizontal distance. So theta C right in decimal is equal to positive 343.333 over EI, which is the same as in double integration. So that's it for this problem.